Rahubat, as we say in our language, Miss Batia, Nuapik. Um, yeah, this is going to be another review of a number of books. For the newcomers, these books, if you've watched our series, Series 1, on Ask Us Anything regarding Musabat, um, a lot of people are asking us about the different scrolls and the information that we talk about. People are like, how come you know so much information and how can I be like you? And the answer is read, read the book, study the scrolls. Um, we can't answer your question if you don't ask us a question and you can't ask us a question if you don't read or study the information. So it's kind of like, unless you ask us the question, sometimes it's hard for us to remember. So we have to go into the dome. But mm. just to give you a quick um, summary of what Wu Sabat is about. Wu Sabat is the hereafter doctrine, meaning that we're in, after the year 2012, after the dimensional shift, after the year 2000, which is the sun cycle, has come in, there's new information that is here to liberate and help humanity. And that's what Wu Sabat is. Wu Sabat is our culture as Sabians or Nuwapians, and it answers questions on everything you can think of to deal with our culture, spirituality, sciences, history, astrology, astronomy, health. health, name it, because we have a complete 360 of spiritual information or the unseen and 360 of the physical world or the scene, giving us the 720 degrees, which you have to master to become a supreme being. And your brain um, is what the organ that will help you to process information. And this is why, you know, we share the knowledge as given to us and taught to us by our, or the master teacher, Parnabad Bianun, known as Dr. Malachi Ziyo. So we're just reviewing some of the books and I would suggest you get hold of every book that we review. So yes, my brother, you ready? Yep. All right, let's dive in. So the first scroll we're going to look at is, are there UFOs in your midst, right? Um, this scroll was written in 1995 um, and yeah, it covers a lot of information. You want to... Give them a taste. Yep. Um, it goes into what are UFOs or UAPs as they're known now. Um, goes into the different types of um, encounters from the first, fourth, third, fourth, fifth. Yeah, let's actually break that down. So um, they say close encounters. Yeah. So uh, close encounter one will be. Um, where there's no no interaction yeah, yeah. in, no it's contact, side, yeah. nothing. So that's known as um, close encounter one. Close encounter two is where you might have like electrical storms or you know some type of paranormal activity. Close encounter three is when there's actual contact. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, there was a movie called Close Encounter. Close, yeah. Was it free? Mm -hmm. Yeah, close encounters Counter of the, the third, third kind. kind. Yeah. yeah. So the first kind, as we said, is where there's no interaction. Second kind is where there might be like paranormal activity, electrical, you know, interference, things like that. Close encounter of the third kind, like the movies, where you actually have an interaction with um, extraterrestrials. And then close encounters of the fourth kind, mm. which again they made a movie about, yep. <laughs> which you should definitely watch because it wasn't a movie as such, it was a documentary mm. movie where the footage and some of the audio recordings were actual encounters mm. with extraterrestrials. So if you watch that, you'll see that what they've done is shown real footage from like cameras and CCTV, and then the bits that where the aliens taken someone or something and it's cut out they've actually got the people that were involved to reenact and then they've got actors to act it and they show you side by side the real footage 
and then they kind of blend in the actors that are giving you the bits that are missing. And this took place in Nome, in Alaska, because Nome, Alaska has six months of the year in darkness. Um, and this was something that actually took place where they came and abducted a lot of people, mm. um, 144,000. Yeah. <laughs> so, mm. yeah, so this book, Are There UFOs in Your Mitts, covers the different first kind, second kind, third kind. Um, goes into the um, Bob Lazar as yeah. well. Um, From Area 57, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Area 50, yeah, go Area on. 51, yeah. Um, so dealing with like um, element 115, which was um, Omnicrom. Yeah. Yeah, it talks about Hitler. Because remember that Hitler was trying to explore um, the Antarctica to um, find out about crafts and then he actually met beings, um, Pleiadians and beings from Aldebaran and they gave him the, you know, information. They actually gave him a lot of information for the crafts that he was using. Um, it talks about the Ashtar command that, you know, Adolf Hitler was, was um, in contact with. Um, Obviously, David, um, Dwight David Eisenhower and people like Harry S. Truman, who were presidents of America, they basically, they also had, you know, contact and they made deals with some of these extraterrestrials. And what's important, look at this. This is um, the predator being, yeah? And the, this is a being that comes from Andromeda. Mm. And um, this is where when you saw the movie, the predator, people were like, Wow, that looks exactly like the being in the books. Um, yeah, so these, these are beings that they're also um, from, from um, Pleiadians, Andromeda. They're like grasshopper-looking predators. Yeah, and then you've got the draconians, the different types, species. Um, the crop circles, it goes into that. A lot of crop circles. Serious A and B, goes into Serious A and B. That, um, the Nomos came from, who had um, encounters with the, the Dogon tribe in Mali, West Africa. Mm. Yeah, and it's, it documents actual people that had encounters. It goes into, some people have like little holes in their ears. Oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're just yeah, about to go into that, yeah. Yeah, go on, you can go see, for it. See the holes in the ear? So now when you ask most people, how did they get the holes in the air? They said, ah, oh, I was born stubborn. But this is a birthmark, so how could you be born stubborn? Mm. But now, as the math teacher's um, broken down or explained to us that those with holes in the air, they're supposed to hear, let's use the word God, or the voice of God, which should be dealing with like tone, sounds and frequency. So those people are supposed to be guide, guide people to safe spots on the planet. Yeah, so it's about um, certain certain broadcast messages mm. from crafts and only certain people may have the ability to, to pick them up. And um, when the time comes, when, you know, when these, these messages are being sent, um, only certain people... Now, not everyone who's got a yeah. hole in hole their ear, yeah, they're yeah, going to yeah, say, yeah. like, I must be, you know... But, yeah, there's specific people that have... Like, there are also certain people that have been abducted and they have little chips in their body somewhere. They just wake up and they're like, what's that? Um, and sometimes it's because these extraterrestrials put chips in them to mark them. And this is how they can always find them wherever they are, um, pick them up and examine them. Yeah, um, what else does this book go um, to? Val Four, who worked in the White House, a visitor, extraterrestrial. There's a picture of him with his crew. Don't know if you can see that. Valium 4. Yep. Um, yeah, you've got all the different types of beings. The Syrians, which are like your shaggy beings. You've got um, the different species of greys and reptilians. Um, I mean, mm. so go on. Yeah, it goes into the draconians as well. Winged reptilians, non-winged reptilians, greys and human interaction. Yeah, um, if you really want to know about 
you know what I mean? Like the extraterrestrial or the EBEs, as we've mentioned before, that were captured um, when, when they crashed. You know, the, the New Mexico, you've heard about Roswell, yeah. New Mexico, the actual pictures and even like, you know, the actual bodies of the craft, of, of the beings that, you know what I mean, that died in the craft and they took them to places like Area 51. Um, yeah, so all the evidence, it talks about the Anunnaki, deals with Ninki, Ninti, Apsu, Tamat, um, and how they were obviously running the, um, the laboratories um, in what they call the underworld and um, carrying out many, many experiments um, to create different types of beings until they perfected the Homo erectus. So you got genus Homo, then that evolved into Homo genius, then to the, you know, Homo erectus, which means to stand up straight or upright to the Homo sapiens. And um, as you know, we've broken down that today in terms of the scientific classification of the races, because again, um, when we talk about extraterrestrials and when we say UFOs in your midst, it's like when you look at the clouds, you know, sometimes you look at a cloud and it's got a very funny shape or it moves in a particular way. And you're like, mm. how is that cloud moving like that? It's because a lot of times these extraterrestrials use the clouds as camouflage to hide and cloak themselves. Um, so, you have, yeah, look, in, look up and study, study the skies and study, you know, what clouds are doing when they're doing it. And you will start to, you know, find out that some clouds don't behave like clouds. Mm. Yeah, so, yeah, nice little book to have in your, in your library. Um, yeah, I mean, is there anything else you want to cover? Um, also goes into the Betty and Barney incident. Yeah, lo lots of um, abductions in this book. People, you know, giving their testimonies, talking about the different experiments that were done Who, on who's them. Betty and Barney? Betty and Barney. Yeah. They were abducted or they had a UFO encounter. Yeah. I think it was in the late 40s, was it? Oh, right. So they actually, like, given their Six, testimony yeah. of, of what happened. Betty and Barney Hill. Yeah. September 9th, 1961, in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Okay, yeah, yeah, I see it, yeah. I read this a very long time ago, yeah. you know, but um, this is what we're saying about the more knowledge you accumulate, you know what I mean, the more, like, you can put the pieces together because the world would like to play out like there's no extraterrestrials or no UFOs and make people think they're crazy. Well, back in the day anyway, like mm. in the 90s when we were being taught this information, if you spoke about extraterrestrials or UFOs, you were made to feel like, cuckoo, like you're going yeah. crazy, yeah? But now there's so many sightings and with like mobile phones and technology and video footage and many people being abducted all around the world, it's become nothing now like for people to talk about that you won't get ridiculed mm. like before so this book again as we always say dr york was way ahead of his time and um if you want to learn about the details of extraterrestrials and ufos in your midst you could be walking past extraterrestrials every day mm. and you don't even <laughs> realize you are because some people look a certain way you might think well oh, why that's just like you know, people that got piercings and tattoos and all kinds of stuff. Not everyone, so don't get it twisted. <laughs> but, you know what I mean, to the extreme where you're like, that's a bit odd, or the way they look or they height or something, you know. So, yeah, good scroll to get hold of. All right, remember, who's we'll about to say to, to bust the spell? Yep. Yeah, so, yeah. All right, we're going to move on to the next one.